this already. Yeah. So can, verse 30. No, no, uh, we stopped that murder debate. You can move on from there. All right. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Yeah, you whispering, right? All this stuff you, you got going on. Let's get verse 30. Let's see what, what we're talking about here. Backbiters, you're backbiting your brothers, man. Right? Read. Haters of God. Why? Because you hate the most high. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, right? Let's read on. Despiteful. Yeah, these brothers, these sisters, they tend to be very despiteful. These are all the signs, the traits of what happens when the most high gives you over to a reprobate mind, right? Let's read on. Proud. Damn, these a lot of our people, they very proud. They prideful, right? And what else? Boasters. Inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. You don't want to listen to nothing your parents tell you, right? You're disrespectful to your own parents. We know when we're dealing with our people, right? If you a man or you're a woman and you don't respect your own parents, you ain't going to respect nobody in this world, man. Right. Right? There's an order, man. And that's the order. Children's. That's in the t that's in the Big Ten. The Big Ten tells you honor your father. What's going on, man? You got my tights, right? I know. You, yeah. What's going on, brother Chuck? You, you got my text? I'll text you. Right. Yeah. That's that's the brother. We met him a week ago. He lives. He lives. Good. Brother Chuck. Right. A week ago. See, look. I know his face very well. So we out here teaching. So we out here teaching what what are the traits, what are the personalities, the qualities of what happens when the most high gives you over to a reprobate mind, right? So uh they disobedient to their parents. They don't respect their parents, they don't respect nobody. It tells you that in the in the Ten Commandments, honor your father, honor your mother, right? These these uh a lot of our people they disrespectful to their parents. They cursing out their mother, cursing out their father. And a lot of times we see what? We see that because we see that's how our mother treats our fathers. Right? What's going on, Chuck? Yeah, we're going to be here. Uh, oh, where? Go ahead. Do your thing. We'll be right here. Um, huh? What time is that? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we do our Bring thing. Bring it out. We do our thing. You know what we do after we finish? Yeah, we're going to be here. I'm going to thank you. All right, go ahead. Okay, good. Alright, this is we got, right? So we got good timing. 826. The oh, thing is open to like 10. Oh, okay. 10. Uh, we got me too. We good with that. We will deal with that. Nah, we'll deal with that. Nah, 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 nah. We're sticking for God. We're sticking for God. What up? Yeah, come on. We're going to read them right now. We're going to read them right now. We're talking about what? Alright, it's 830. It's 830. Right? So our people, right? The Bible teaches you, even in the Ten Commandments, honor what your father, honor your mother, right? But what happens is we start disrespecting our parents, right? We don't want to do stuff like that. Cursing them out. And you, you know a lot of times where that comes from is us seeing how our mothers treat our fathers. You don't want to stick it out with them. You don't want to tough it out with them. Right. You're disrespecting right. our father, right? So a lot of times we think that that's acceptable. That's something that's off. That's something that's wrong. That is not uh, normal. We need to stop normalizing that type of behavior within amongst our people, man. You see your mother violating your father. You know that you, when you grow up, you're gonna look for that familiar spirit. You're gonna look for another woman who imitates your mom. Oh, you, your woman that you get is gonna be violating you disrespecting you the same way your mother did to your father. And we think that that's acceptable, but this Bible tells you that those are not good things for you, right? So let's read on. Hey, Elder, you wanna, you wanna hold one of these? Uh, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, yeah. All right, come on. so we're here to bring this out, right? Let's continue on down. We're gonna get off a couple of more scriptures. Then wind it down. Where we at so far? 31, let's bring it out. Verse 31, without understanding Right? You're, you're moving in life without no type of understanding. You don't got no type of 
wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these holy scriptures, you're moving through light in darkness, man. Right? We covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. If you make a pact, a truce with somebody, you better keep that thing. If you made a vow, even the Bible tells you that. You make a vow, you better keep it because the most high, he wishes you never even made a vow, right? Right. Read. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. You unmerciful with your own brother, man. Your own brother cannot even cross you one time. You ready to cut that brother off, man. Right? So throw the whole 7 times 70 scripture out. Throw it away. Cross me one day at a time. I'm, 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 I'm cutting you. I'm cutting you the H-E double hockey sticks off. Right? So let's, let's read on verse 32. <laughs> hockey sticks. <laughs> Who knoweth the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Are worthy of what? Are worthy of death. See, the Bible says you're worthy of death. So what that means, you got a death spirit attached to you. You got to get that death spirit up off of you. And the way you're going to do that is returning back to these law statutes and commandments. Let's read it. Not only do the same, but have pleasures in them that do them. Yeah, because now you're enjoying this sinful lifestyle. You're enjoying living life ungodly, wickedness, covetous, all these things. Let's get uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and let's get verse 1. Let's start from there, right? We show them what it looks like to when the Most High gives you over to a reprobate mind, right? Let's bring this out. The book of 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 1. This known also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right? All type of stuff is going to be hitting the fan in these last days, man. Perilous times is going to come. Right? We're going to be getting tried out here. We're going to be getting tested. Right? We what out about? here in the dead cold of winter still bringing this off. Uh, bringing it out. Man. Right? Let's get verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Right? They don't love their brethren no more. Now they love themselves, man. They taking thousands of selfies or whatever, anything that pertains to this scripture right here. They loving themselves, right? It's not about their brother anymore. It's not about the sisters no more. It's all about themselves, right? They very self-absorbed. That's read. Covetous. Covetous, right? Read. Boasters. Boasters. They boasting now, right? They got this. They got that. Right, they worried about what, what uh, not what they could get or what, what you can't get. They worried about uh, you know, they own they own uh, filthy lucre and all this different type of thing. Read, proud, right. blasphemous, right. disobedient to parents. There we go, back to that scripture. You don't respect your parents, right? We know that a lot of us come from dysfunctional households. We know that there's all sorts of abuse going on in there. Whether it was verbal abuse, whether it's drug abuse, right? But if they don't know any better, then we gotta be an example and move with a different type of spirit. We can't follow them in their way, right? Let's read. Unthankful, unholy. Yeah, they don't have, they, they, not, they, they wait once a year to be thankful. They wanna wait for Thanksgiving to be thankful, right? Thankful for all sorts of things, right? But every day we're thankful. Every day we give thanks to your house, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, right? And, and they are holy, right? We? Without natural affection, right? truth breakers. There we go, back to that truth breakers. Back to being a covenant breakers, right? That's what a lot of our people do. We build a bond, we build the truth, and then we go uh, uh, through through shaking up just a little something, and then we break it, man. Right? Let's read. False accusers and continuance. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Right now, you don't even want to rock with those that doing good. Right now, you want to separate. Right, we just touching on a few things. Let's jump down to verse four. Traitors, heady. What? Wait a second. Get that again. What you are? Traitors. Damn. Now it's, it's saying traitors. We just touching on some things that are, a lot of our people we deal with. Right. So we just went. We just want to let our people know we out here to wake up a brother, wake up a sister, right? We can't be moving like this, right? So 
let's let's continue on. High-minded, right? Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yeah, because yeah, now right. you're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, right? And what does that pertain to? You want to be men pleasers. You're not worried about being the pleaser of the Most High. You want to please men, right? Let's read a couple more on this, right? Verse five. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. That means a lot of lusts, right? A lot of different type of lusts, right? Let's get verse 7 and then we'll go into something else here. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as James and Jeffries were still... Salakia, yeah, that's good on there. You can drop that. We're going to get a couple more scriptures and then I'm going to wind it down, right? Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 25. Let's get that real quick, right? So we're here to let our people know what we're up against, what we're dealing with. You, you taught, Mike? It says, yeah. we see it says, in the last days, right? That's how you can tell. You see a lot of this stuff going on right now. That's how you can tell we in the last days, right? We got a lot of this. A lot of our, the children, the kids, they don't respect their parents, disobedience in the households, right? They grow up like that. They don't respect their parents. They don't respect nobody else. People of their own race, their own uh, nationality, their own tribe, right? All these different type of things, right? Let's bring this up. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You see, you can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Right? A couple of examples of that, right? Oh, you wait till a Tuesday when it's a Tuesday, but you wait till it's iron sharp and iron join the a, a, a Israelite class. And then on Wednesday, you want to go back to the nation of Islam, man. That's the same thing what this is talking about. You want to, uh, some days, certain days, you want to drink from the Lord's cup. And then other days, you want to drink from, from, the, from the devil's cup, man. Let's read on. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of God. Yeah, but that's what a lot of us be, be, be facing, man. We go all crazy on the Sabbath, doing everything up under the sun, and then we wait to hit up church on Sunday, man. Right? See, these are the different type of things. And this is what the Bible, this has been going on since the beginning of time, man. Right? Let's get uh, Joshua 24 and verse 15. I'm going to uh, get a couple more, and I'm passing on to the elder, right? Just a couple more scriptures, right? I just got to let our people know what we're up against, man. This spiritual demon is Satan is going to happen out here, right? And we already know who our true enemy is. The so-called white man, Esau, the other nations, Amalek, Jewish people, right? Let's bring this out. 24 verse 15, come on. Verse 15. Come on, bring this out, Bob Shaw. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord. It's like it. So this Bible, it seems evil to our people. You know why? Because they don't want to let go of Thanksgiving. They don't right. want to stop the pork. Right? They don't want to stop celebrating paganism, Christmas, New Year's. So this Bible seems evil. They, they think eat that a lot of crab they eat shrimp. a lot of crab, shrimp, no right? They, the Bible people, teaches us it's in the law saying that we're not supposed to eat swine, not even touch it. But we got our people that's cooking pork shoulders on these wicked holidays. And let me pray to God. Like God is not hearing you because you eating a whole abomination, man. You eating abominable foods, right? A lot of our people love what they need. That's pork shoulder in Spanish, right? <laughs> a lot of our people love pork shoulder. They, a lot of our people still eating ham and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, I, I got rid of all of that during the five percent days. During the five percent days, right? What they do is be like. Have good enough common sense. Good enough common sense, right? And that's that's a whole that's a whole different topic that we're talking about. about let's, bring, let's continue on. Bring it up. Choose you this day when he will serve. Right? You're gonna have to make a choice, man. Either you're gonna stay hot, stay on fire in this thing, 
or you're going to wind up uh, losing that flame, that fire, and you're going to go cold. The Most High said he wished that you would choose either or, man. Because if you look for him, what he going to do? He's going to spew you out, man. Right? So let's read. Whether the gods which the Father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose who, land he dwelt. But as for me and my house, as for what? But as for me and my house. As for us in nature, what? But as, as for, for me and my house. As for me and my brothers. We will serve the Lord. We're going to serve Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shah in these last days, man. We're going to stay ten toes down. We're going to stay bringing this word out. We don't give a damn if it's rain, hail, sleep, snowballs out here. Right? We don't care if, if, uh, uh, if it's a damn media storm out here. We're going to still come and hit this and hit this downtown Brooklyn. We're still going to come out 34th Street. We're still going to hit a power square. And we're still going to bring that fire out there in Satan's living room, man. By a shot, I was shot. Good. Right? So this is what we got. By a shot, I was shot. All right, so Good. we're going to get two more, and then that's it for me, right? Uh, let me get um, Psalms 1 and 1. Let's get that. And then the last scripture I'm going to get, Joshua 1 and 8. I'm going to close out with that. All right? So we out here, man, downtown Brooklyn, man. We come from the outer boroughs. We come all the way out, out, of, out, out of our way to uplift Yahweh, but Yahweh Shai, man. This is our job, man, right? So we're going to do what we're going to do. Let's bring this out. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So if you see that, you know, you got you to gotta pay attention and watch who you associate yourself with, right? If you in a circle with people who's ungodly, move away from them, right? If you, right. If you with sinners, you got to move away from them, right? The Bible teaches you that, right? Let's, let's read. Nor stand up in the way of sinners, nor sit up in the seat of the scornful. Right, let's get verse 2. But, for his, sorry, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditate day, day and night. night. For I'm how long? Day and night. Lord. For a little while. Day, day and night. night. Let's get Joshua one and eight. I'm I'm never gonna gonna right? I'm so we gotta stay up in the book of this Bible. Right. You understand, sister? We gotta do stuff for nine, two, and one. We gotta gather with our people, man. Right? But if you see that you run rolling with, you know, your family who is moving like this, ungodly or sinners, or even friends of the world that's ungodly and sinners, move away from them. Right? right but if you all of this whole scripture is for me. Right. I just told you the guy was walking up ahead. Right. You know, I just stared at me. <laughs> right. And I was like, well, not tonight. You're usually walking up ahead of me, but you think you're going to walk past me tonight? I told you right. I was only coming here, remember? So, yeah. For, uh, for, uh, um, just to get the information about the Zoom class. Yeah, the Zoom class. You see, I'm still here. That's right. And I was listening to the message. No, I've been seeing, I've been seeing you a couple of years since the whole presence was supposed to be said. I'm a person like a Zoom camera. Take it really quick. Fast and good out. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that I can't, but like they got classes and stuff. I've been listening to y'all for a couple of years. Yeah, I know. Whenever you didn't see me, I didn't go to this school or go to that school. Because I'm just a woman. I don't Right. No, no, we can see you. So I didn't know if they resonated with y'all. I was like, no, I learned it from y'all. I'm gonna come back to ask y'all. That's right. I keep going over All there. praises to the Most High, man. I see them on Saturday. But I shut my shot, y'all. All right, that's so that's I'm gonna get my last scripture. Let, let's get this last scripture. Let's say one thing. Down. Everything y'all ever said in the two years, the two months that I saw y'all, you know already. Yeah. Because you don't need me to tell you this. We appreciate prophecies, you, sister. Prophecies, prophecies that I've sat and heard you speak on on 34th Street or 42nd Street. Well, down here, I've actually passed. Oh, crazy. And they're going to continue to pass. The you know what I mean? Man. Right? Let's go. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So I bring this out to give motivation to our people. We should never stop getting into these scriptures. We should never put this book down. A lot of us, we just have it, and we'll have it open on the book of Psalms. We allow it to collect dust and everything, but we never got to stop reading this book of this Bible, man. 
right? This is very important for us, especially in these days, in these times, man, being doesn't try and time, right? And with that, this is your brother Sasha, Zebulon, H-O-Y, and Brian and Jay. I want to say, Brian, get there, Yahawa. Peace, safety, and blessing to the whole 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Double honors to the elders of HOY and the Pele of I want to say, Kwame Ashala. Kwame Ashala. Kwame Ashala. Kwame Ashala. Kwame Oh, praises. I'm happy to see you, Peace of God. So we're going to continue with the good word. Right, the brother spoke word of the spirit, give all praise, right, and glory to the Most High Yahweh Shai, man. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Let me, um, let's get right into it. Give me Jeremiah 5 and 1. All right, give me Jeremiah the fifth chapter and the first verse. All right, the brother spoke word of the spirit, man. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, man. Teaching this word, enduring to the end. Continuing to bring this gospel out no matter what, whether they hear or forbid. That's what it's about, man. Coming out here and get this work done. In season, out of season. All right, read that, King. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. The Lord said, run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Even though we're downtown Brooklyn, New York City, but we have to go amongst our people. That's symbolic for Go amongst your people. Right, come on. And see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. The Lord says, see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. If you can find a man. If we can find a man or a woman or any of our nation. God. If there be any that execute of judgment. If there be any that execute of judgment. Righteous judgment. God. That seeketh the truth. That what? That seeketh the truth. Seeketh the truth. Seek it the truth. We are here to find those that seek it the truth, man. You black, Latino, Native American, and similar Indian, you should be tired of lies, man. You should be tired of lies. But you separated. When you came out of this wicked world, you separated from the lies. Right. Right now you got Israelites talking about celebrating Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I saw what that. What's going on, man? I saw that. Well, what the hell is going on? The scriptures say from an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? Mm -hmm. So now you don't you don't go back. You don't go back. Give me a second Peter, I believe it's two and twenty. Alright, second Peter's chapter two, I believe it's verse twenty. Right, you don't come into the truth only to backslide. Right. You don't come into the truth and say, hey, you celebrate the Passover every year. But you say, Oh, Christmas Day, we're gonna put up a Christmas tree in our house. But we're going to make this day all about your house shine. <laughs> <laughs> right, please, brother. I heard that. Read. <laughs> Look at 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 20. God. Bring it out. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. After you have escaped the pollutions of the world. God. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After you escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Hamashiach, your house shine. God. They are again entangled therein. You go back and get tangled therein. Come on. And overcome. And what? And overcome. overcome. You go back overcome with the ways of the world. You go back to eating swine and pork. Mm. Right? Come on. The latter end is worse with them. The Lord said their latter end is worse with them. Because according to mouth, we said seven more demons take hold of you. Ah. Right? Come on. Then the beginning. The Lord said your latter end is worse than the beginning. Really? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Then. After they have known it, to turn from the holy commandments. The Lord said it's better for them not to know the way of righteousness than to have known it and to turn from the commandment. Right, come on. Delivered unto them. Okay. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. It's happened unto them according to the true proverb. God, the dog, the dog, God, is turned to his own father. The dog has returned to his own father. How you, how you come into the truth, give, give up this world, Come into your house, shy. Keep these commandments. Learn these commandments. Learn about friendships, the feast days, only to go back and celebrate Thanksgiving. Back, come on. And the soul that was washed to her, and the sow, which is the female pig, the sow that was washed to her, good. Wallowing in the mud. Wallowing in the mud. That's like somebody washed down their pig on a farm, and the pig go back and wallow back in the slice. So come on, man. 
you can't turn back to the to the to the bondage man. You can't come into this truth and repent and keep the commandments and, and learn about the house shot and the truth, only to turn and go back into the world. Man. Most of them are dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So my point being, when you come, when you call, give me St. John of 15, 16. Right, when you call into this truth, you gotta take it serious, man. You can't be playing with your how and your how shot. You can't come in this truth and say, listen, all right, these seven things I agree with, I'm gonna follow them. But 15 other things, I'm gonna twist the scripture around and manipulate the scripture to fit, uh, like how the scripture say, you're gonna heat to yourself, teachers have an itch in ears. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't wanna stop dealing with white women. I'm obsessed with dealing with white women. Mm -hmm. I got a fetish for dealing with white girls. I'm, I'm, I'm horny for white girls. Right, excuse my excuse me, sis, but it is what it is. We all grow. Right. Nigga got a horny demon on him for white girls. So what he gonna do? He gonna go in the scriptures and say, see, there was times we dealt with these the women, huh? They're gonna go <laughs> yeah. in the scriptures and they're gonna eat to themselves, teachers have an itch of ears. Right. Or if they knew to the truth, they're gonna follow the elder that says okay to lay with a white. Mm. Because what? They wanna continue in that lifestyle. They come into the truth, they start learning the laws. And then they spirit short circuit on certain things. Like, oh damn, I gotta give up Becky. Now I wanna still be with Becky. Then Becky and OJ Simpson in trouble. Then Becky get Kobe Bryant in trouble. Y'all better learn about that damn Becky, man. Mm. Right, me, kid. The book of John. So like it. Didn't Becky get a lot of brothers hung and lynched and castrated during slavery? Mm. But didn't Becky do that? Right. Me, kid. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 16. Go ahead. Bring it out. He have not chosen me. Yeah, how much that say? You have not chosen me. Go ahead. But I have chosen you. But I have chosen you. Mm. This is an honor, man. God. You don't let you don't come or uh, let your house shine the spirit call you into this thing only to turn back to the vomit, man. Right. You don't let your house shine call you into this thing and you repent, you will learn the dietary law and everything you do in a Passover, you most in the lamb. But then on Christmas, you want to damn smother and fuck No, nah, man, that's not what this thing is about. You got to fully repent and come to uh, the most out of Hashiach, Yahweh, Read that one more time, man. Uh, verse 16. Read. You have not chosen me. The Lord said, you have not chosen me, God. But I have chosen you. But I have chosen you. Come on. And ordained you. And ordained you, God. That ye should go and bring forth fruit. And you should go and bring forth fruit. But also, the scriptures also say... Many of them were chosen. Ah. So how was that said, look, I, you have not chosen me, I chose you, man. He was mainly talking to the disciples here. So those that are chosen by your house shot, they not going nowhere. But a lot of you are reprobates, man. You come into this thing and you become a castaway. Right? How you going to uh, uh, get this knowledge, man, and then go back to all kinds of wickedness and try to partake of the feast days of this society? The Lord said he hate and despise the feast days of this society. Right. And he hated and despised our feast days when we were not doing them in a proper spirit. Mm. All right, give me Ephesians 6 and 10. Give me Ephesians 6, chapter 10, verse. You got to put on the whole armor of your fellow body. You, so you, you can't be half stepping. Right. Ain't no half stepping. Like my brother did <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no half stepping, man. Right. Like Dougie Fresh said. Ain't no half stepping, man. You got to cover this thing full fledged. Right, you can't be house stepping with the most high. Read Ephesians 6 and 10. Read. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. Bring it out. The damn civilization and damn Israelites are celebrating Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I was traveling a lot. You know, that's a figure of speech. Right. But like I come back, like I'm, I was so busy and moving, I was seeing little stuff going on. I'm like, what the hell is this? Right, right. But then I, I get a chance to sit down for a minute. I said, what the hell is going on? But nah, man, what's Israel, man? But you know what? We gotta rejoice in that, right? And, and and people might say, well, why would you rejoice in that? Elder, they supposed to be repentant. You know why? As crazy as hell as it's getting, that lets us know we living in the last days. That know we living in the end time where Israelites with fringes on and are, are saying it's okay to celebrate Thanksgiving and eat pork. Mm. So we know people are bugging the hell out in these last days and we know we in the end. We know, we look at that and be like, damn it, let's stay safe. That's how we go. So it, it is a good thing. It's a good sign. Right? Because people are bugging and hung out. Where are you, King? The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, 
Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, God. And in the power of his might. And in the power of Yahweh by so much, Yahweh by might. God, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. You got to put on all the laws, statutes, and commandments and surround yourself. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh by so much, Yahweh by God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the tricks of Satan. That's what we're talking about. Put on the whole armor of the Most High that you may be able to stand against the evil of Satan. You can't be halfway with the Most High. You gotta have that full gambit of the protection. Like right, that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But right? our fight is not a carnal fight. Even though it can get carnal, but it's not a carnal fight. Stand with the people and you trust them. Brother, bring it out, man. Bring it out, man. Yeah. For real, man. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures tell you a righteous man's spirit is best in this society, man. You best, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the Hawashi said, you can't bear, you can't bear them that are evil, and you have more than have patience and have labor and have that faith, man. Like, right, give me that matter of fact. Revelation two and two. We'll go back to your people. All right, Revelation two and two. Yeah, man. Uh, a righteous man. Spirit gets vexed with this society, man. Right here, what you got, man? The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 2. Bring it out. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. Yeah, I wish I said he knows the works and the labors and the patience of the true servants of the Lord. God, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And how you can't bear them which are evil, man. The spirit gets vexed, man. It gets vexed in this wicked society. It gets vexed with all the evil that goes on. It get vexed with those trying to destroy the truth. It get vexed with those coming against this Bible. It get vexed with those talking about those guys are terrorists, man. They're hate mongers and they're terrorists. No, we teach them not fear the Lord. The problem with you is you can't deal with it, man. You can't deal with it. You love this society and this world too much. But as for me and my house, like Josh brought out, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh -huh. right, come on. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles. Lord said, we have tried them, which say they are apostles. Go ahead. And are not. And are not. Come on. And has found them liars. And has what? And has found, found them liars. Right. We have defended. Give me from um, Jude 1 and 3. We have defended this gospel. We have defended this gospel against all the lying teachers, man. We defended this gospel against all those that said they're men of the Lord. They're pastors. They're preachers. All we done dealt with them all over the years, man. Mm. And has found them to be liars. You know why? Because they follow the doctrine of the world. They're not following the doctrine of thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. Preaching the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 3. God. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend. Exhort you, encourage us that we should earnestly contend. Come on. For the faith. For the faith, man. So brothers have earnestly contended for the faith. Not to toot my own horn, but my, my, me, myself. I've dealt with all kinds of college people and uh, professionals and religious people and people in government, celebrities, all over the years. And and, and it's, it's not, like I said, it's not to toot my own horn. So let me say it humbly. In comparison to the word of the Lord, it don't do a damn thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me, not, let me not sound like I'm being proud. But all the people of high stature in this society, we have dealt with them, and when it comes to the word of the Lord, they don't know what they mm -hmm. They cannot match this Bible word for word. God. Read it again, Jude 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, when you read the book of Baruch 336, Beloved is entitled for the nation of Israel. Come on. <clears throat> it was needful for me to write unto you. It was needful for me to write unto you. Come on. And exhort you. Exhort you. Encourage you. Come on. That ye shall earnestly contend for the faith. That you should earnestly contend for the faith. Go ahead. Which was once delivered unto the saints. Which was once delivered unto the saints, the Israelites. The saints are the Israelites, right? Right. These titles that Jude is speaking about are for the Israelites. Right. Come on. For there are certain men. You got certain men crept in unawares. Even brothers came into this truth and try to act like they some mighty man. Brothers learned a few scriptures and now they know more than brothers and they try to exalt themselves like they some kind of pastor or prophet 
like the Most High is dealing with them on such a high level, and they came with a doctrine and they got shut down. Mm. We had councils and different things, and the brother said, The spirit showed me something different in the scripture, God. Mm. Most I revealed it to me because I'm Isaiah. I'm Isaiah in the regeneration. Most I showed it to me. And he said, All right, brother, explain what, what doctrine you're coming with. Already we looked at the side out like this thing is fucked out. And all right, brother, we're going to hear you out, though. So you don't say we didn't. Okay. Because what? You have men pressed them unawares. You got brothers that come in. You think they brothers. You think they cool. And then they, they get a couple of scriptures. They start learning. And then now they know more than everybody. And then we got to go back and earnestly contend. We got to reel these, these doctrine nut cases back in. And be like, no, brother, you're going off. You're leaning on your own understanding. That's not what the scripture is saying. Right. We got to reel back in these doctrine nut cases. So we got to earnestly contend for the faith because there's certain men that creep in unawares, even men that want to change the doctrine and the scripture and exalt themselves like they know more than other brothers and the most high dealing with them and they come in with a nonsense doctrine that we got to shut down. One second, so read on. Who were before of old ordained. The Lord said, uh, be, who were before of old ordained. In order for you to know who the true men of the Lord is, you got to see who the false men of the Lord, who are not the men of the Lord are. Right, come on. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. The Lord said, ordained to this condemnation. The Lord said, I was I'm already I'm gonna use people like that as an example. Come on. Ungodly men. Ungodly men. Come on. Turning the grace of our God into the lasciviousness. The Lord said, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Brothers coming into the truth and talking about we can still celebrate Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Lasciviousness is uncontrollable and untamed lust. Meaning you gotta, you gotta eat the pork so bad. You can't control yourself. You gotta eat the pork so bad. It's an untamed lust that you have to eat the pork. So you gonna change the most high doctrine and say we're not under the Mosaic law because I wanna eat the damn ham on Thanksgiving. Or one time a group of brothers told me, a group of brothers said, so if I wanna eat a double cheeseburger, a double bacon cheeseburger for White Castle, on, on, on a day of atonement, I can do that. I don't have to fast. I can eat a double. First of all, nigga, I want to eat a double bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> I'm the most damn unhealthiest thing. You ain't even say, well, if, if I want to go get a gourmet burger with some damn pepper bacon, you know what I'm saying? Right. You ain't even say nothing of a higher end. You said, if I want to go get a dollar, Double cheeseburger or a two dollar double cheeseburger for white castle. A, a bacon double cheeseburker. I could do that on a day of atonement. I listen, you can't make this stuff up. Right. I actually heard if Israelites that know they from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Gad, Simeon, say this. Because they said, look, we're not we're not under the law of Moses no more. We're under the new law of Christ. So if I want to eat a bacon double uh, uh, cheeseburger on the day of atonement. I don't have to fast, and I can eat pork, and whatever the hell that meat is from my castle. <laughs> that damn thing might be donkey meat, man. You know what I'm saying? Kangaroo meat. Maybe I don't like know. Him. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the, I'm saying it's just you turn to the grace of your Allah and to the serious man. Right. You 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 talking about you soaked your ham in Coca Cola for two days so it can marinate? Yeah. Israelites call it, Israelites call it on the name of your God. That's how we know we living in the last days, man. Come. You call it on the name of your God and saying you soaked your ham in Coca Cola, which this thing is too the weirdest stuff to eat. Mm. <laughs> That's how you know it's a reprimand spirit on them, man. Now mm. you ain't just say, well, I had some ham with some glaze on it. You had to soak in a damn Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> don't they say, well, no, that was Sunday. I think they said if you pour the sun kiss on the floor, then you can see the worms. Yeah, the worms, yeah. Remember, people did that experiment here before. Yeah. They said if you pour the orange sun kiss soda on a piece of pork, you leave it out in the sun, then the, the worms come out. What's the, no, the other thing? The maggots. The maggots. Yeah, the maggots, yeah. right. They said you can see the maggots come out of the pork, yeah. Yeah. Now, I heard that, I heard that like in the 80s. Right. I heard that when I was a child growing up. Yeah, they said if you take like a pork chop and then. Yeah. And, but I heard of it, and I believe I've seen the experiment done on the internet. I believe so. Right. You take a pork chop and you pour a can of sun soda on it, and even the sun, and you see the maggots. Yeah, you see mm. maggots.
Because these are men that are crept in unawares. Right. These are men that the spirit, the most high, warned us about. You have certain men that will keep it unaware. And they're going to turn to grace. Because the scripture do say we're not under the law, we're under grace. But grace does not have a license to say. Mm -hmm. Meaning we don't get the punishment that we deserve when we fall short, we get a chance to repent. Well, that's what we're talking about under grace. grace that don't mean we're under grace, though. Do I'm going to have me on Thanksgiving Day, I'm going to make a ham. Soaked in Coca-Cola. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you brothers, man? <laughs> I damn near thought the thing was a skit at first. Uh, but you turn in the grace of your holiday into the sugar God. Because you got certain men back then on the web. Come right. on. Right. Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into the lasciviousness. Come on. And denying the only Lord God. You denying the only Lord power, your power, God. And our Lord Jesus Christ. You're denying Hamashiach, Yahawashah. Give me Matthew 517. I'm going to show you how you deny Yahawashah. You deny Yahawah and Yahawashah because Yahawashah is a representation of Yahawah. So how you denying them? When you do that, if you tell me, yo, I can eat a, I can eat a cheeseburger on a day of atonement, I don't have to fast. I can eat a bacon cheeseburger on a day of atonement, I don't have to fast. What you doing? You're going against the grace of your hour by Shiva Mashiach that was shot. Free King. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Bring it out. Think not that I have come to destroy the Lord. That's how you're denying your hour by your hour shot. Because your hour shot said, don't even think about it. That I have come to destroy the Lord. Go ahead. All the prophets. All the prophets. Come on. I have not come to destroy. He said, I have not come to destroy. Come on. But to fulfill. But to fulfill. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you. So heaven and earth pass. Says, Beverly, surely I say unto you, as long as you see heaven and earth here and it has not passed, God, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the Lord. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Lord. Come on. Till all be fulfilled. And till all be fulfilled. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these, these commandments. Now, I don't, I don't know how anybody that come into this truth and talk about, I'm going to eat a bacon cheeseburger on a day of atonement. How you going to get around this scripture? Read, okay? Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Whosoever shall come into this truth and break one of these least commandments, God. And shall teach men so. And shall teach men so, God. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. He's going to mm. be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, God. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Whosoever shall do the law and teach to do the law. We ain't under that Mosaic law no more. We ain't got to follow that no more. Come on. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You can't get around that, man. Oh. Now, what I said, you got to do and teach the law. So like, you know what? Oh. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Because what happened is they taught what they didn't do. They said, but they didn't follow. Go ahead. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, for making it to the kingdom of heaven. Except you you uh, do and teach the law. That's what Yahweh Shah said. You can't just teach it. You got to do it and follow it to the best of your ability. What was your point or question, sis? For me, I said I need a ladder. Right. I mean, you're an elder sister. You're an elder sister. You can be like a, 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 a mother or an older sister. Hell, we need more of y'all. Right. To keep these young sisters in line. But see, you know what? You know what the crazy thing about that is. You know what the crazy thing about that is. The law was never with them. Mm. You know that. That's the whole thing about that, man. And the law used he uses that 
for an example. So, you know, we gotta be mindful, you know. We gotta be mindful that, you know, we, we uh, you know, hopefully you have been chosen. But see, like, Elder Mashah, Elder Mashah back in the One West days, Elder Mashah, he used to say something that was cold. He was like, look, either of the elect or you're not. <laughs> okay? It is what it is. Either, either you up the most high. I remember one time, as a priest, I love you, Unfortunately, you said that one day when I'm Yeah, yeah. I'm always in the... This is my, got, my phone is filled with nothing but YouTube, H-O-I, H-O-I. And guess what? That's what the scriptures are. Either the most high, or you said that you said, look, that number, or you not. You said we're doing all you know we said, can. Give me a Zechariah 13 and 7. We said that. Give me Zechariah 13 and 7. It's cutting dry. It's cutting dry. You said we just... One time, one time, uh, we had another split in the school years ago, right, and, um, but to say, yeah, that's what the most I'm going to destroy y'all, because, because y'all ain't got the truth, y'all ain't really, y'all ain't, y'all ain't teaching the scriptures with understanding, mm. and the, uh, one of my generals at the time, the five-year general, he said, all right, if, if that's the most I'm going well, then that's what it is, then that means we're, we're not the chosen men, y'all the chosen men, so be it, you know what I'm saying? What can we do? <laughs> he, he got him. He got him. Fact, if that's the case, then we're the men that the Lord uses to deceive everybody, and God is the men that the Lord uses. What can we do about it? Can we really do anything about it? We can't do nothing about it. I can't control what the most I chose to be on this earth. Lord forbid. I hope I ain't been teaching all these years and I'm not worthy. But I don't know. And whatever, whatever, whatever the most I put us on this earth for, that's what we're going to be. Right. You know, so we gotta pray. We gotta hope that we're up that door. All right, me, okay. The book of Zechariah, chapter thirteen, verse seven. Bring it out. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, say of the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Smite the shepherd, meaning your house shall be crucified, and the nation of Israel will be scattered out of Jerusalem into captivity, and then gathered back in the last days before your house shall be get free. And I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Good. And it shall come to pass. And in all the land, say of the Lord. In all the land, say of the Lord. Good. Two parts therein. Lord, are we said two thirds of our people, two parts therein. Good. Shall, shall be, be cut, cut off and, and die. Shall be cut off and die. Good. But the third shall be left therein. Only one third will be left therein. And Elder Masha used to say that too. He said, look, you either. And you're the one third, you're the one third, if you're not, you're not. If you have that number, you have that number, if you're not, you're not. Right, come on. And I will bring a third part through the fire, and I will refine them as silver is refined. I will refine them as silver is refined, good. And I will, it's locked in. And will try them as gold is tried. So if you have the one third, you have the one third, if you're not, you're not. You know, so that's it, man. So some of these brothers, give me a, a Hebrew 6 and 1. All right, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Some of these brothers, they came in sisters, they came into the truth. What time, um, what time I met a sister on uh, 42nd Street, man? Okay? Nice sister, she's had a nice spirit about her and everything. She was cool, um, but she had these real tight jeans on and she had breast exposed. And she's like, Shalom, brother. No, well, you know, I realized she was cool after the throat. But she just walked up and was like, hey, Shalom, brother, how you doing? I said, hey, Shalom, sister, how you doing? But I didn't want to judge. I said, maybe she's new to the truth. She had a repentance and put on a dress for She said, oh, yeah, I used to be in the truth, but I'm not doing it. So if you're not the truth, then you must be a <laughs> How you used to be in the truth, but you're not no more? Right. Well. Yeah, I was like, yeah. uh, so she was like, yeah, I, I, I stopped following that. She's like, look, you see, you see what I'm doing? She's like, yeah, I don't really keep the Sabbath no more, nothing, brother, you know. But her excuse was, her excuse was she had a bad experience. She said she had a bad experience with her brother. And, but I said, sis, that don't have to do with the truth. That don't have nothing to do with you walking away from your house. So some brothers and sisters you might see, there's thousands of brothers and sisters out there back in the world, and their excuses they have bad experiences with the So it, it drew them back into the world. Listen, I have bad experiences with this world, but I ain't going back to no damn club on a Friday night. I'm not going back to selling drugs. I'm not going back to being a nigga hanging on a block. 
Well, what's the what's the next uh, fast piece of money we gonna make? Uh, what, what's the next chick? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take home and hit up tonight and don't deal with her no more. Or just call her when I want to. Well, you know, I, I, I'm gonna walk through these niggas' hood uh, with my nine on me. I hope I dare, hope I see one of them niggas. You know, I mean, we gonna go back to that? Hell, no. I wouldn't want that for a trip I wouldn't be stupid. I wouldn't get power to get power shy. But I'm gonna go back and, and, and try to fit into the white man system and, 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 and hope white corporate America accept me. I mean, listen, I would be weak up from all different parts of life. Everybody was in the street. Some people was up in the human rights. Some people was in different uh, uh, forms of this world thinking they gonna fit in. So what you wanna do, go back to that? Hell no, man. This truth is the best thing that ever happened to us in our life. That's right. A lot of brothers and sisters. A lot of them walked away because they said they had bad experiences in Israel. A lot of them, they used a bad experience in Israel because they wanted to go back to the world. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them was just wicked as hell and didn't want to serve the most out of them. They wanted to go back and be a victim. I'm into something though. I know people that went back to the world and died. Yep. They got put to death. Dudes went back selling drugs back on the block that they had to go. Mm. Ran into your act. What are you doing, brother? Yo, yo, I don't say it, Art Man, you know, man, I, this is what I stuff with when you fuck me like that, little bit, man. It's hard out here. Then gotta get this money, man. I'm, I'm just gonna survive, huh? Right. Still calling me out. <laughs> I'm like, I right, yo, bro, you know what I'm saying? You still be in the camp and everything, but what's going on? Not to shoot my own horn, but I've been here 30 years. I've seen a lot. I seen a, I still run into brothers and sisters now. Yo, what's up? You know, I don't I don't really be over right to the but I be like, I because then the scriptures do say if you restore a brother or sister, you know how to multitude of sins. You know how to multitude of sins. You know multitude of sins. Mm. So sometimes it's okay to try to win them back into the fold. And sometimes I've seen that happen. Brothers and sisters will come back and they'll be like, yo, like, yo, seven years I was going off, man. Ten years I was going off. Five years I know brothers and sisters that went way back deep into the world. And a lot of times, it takes them a lot of time to get the experience off of them. Because that's a lot of time going be in a way for the time. You know, so, but some of them, they just fall by the wayside, and um, the most time they just out of the number, the most time they fall. Read, okay? The book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 1. Bring it out. And for even the principles of doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection. That's another reason why a lot of brothers and sisters look back in the world because they didn't grow. They didn't come into the truth and elevate. They didn't come into the truth and get a higher level of maturity. They didn't. They didn't let the little sins that they struggled with. They never really got over. Them. So a lot of a lot of our brothers and sisters, they was like the dog chasing their tail. They never really grew. And I'm not talking about the material things and, oh, we got 50 Israelite schools now. That's good, too. That's good, too. You know what I'm saying? We got people, business and establishments. That's good, too. But they never grew spiritually. Your main growth in this truth. All the other, the material things, that just shows, okay, we're working on the most high blessings. But your main growth in this truth should be your spiritual growth. You got to grow after a while. So a lot of brothers and sisters, they didn't grow so they didn't look for those the Because they spirit didn't elevate. They were still dealing with the, the, the low level things in this society and they spirit. So they got they they got weeded back out into the world. Because the most high your house was like, man, you're not you not sincere, man. I'm gonna just let you go back out to the world again. Free King. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of the See that even the principles of the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, you gotta move on to perfection. Listen, when you're in this truth after so while, you can spot stuff a mile away. People might think of all oh, your 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 judging an issue, and you don't know. I see, I see it a mile away. If I see them once, I've I see seen them. There's a the chance I could be wrong, but nine times out of the ten, I see what's going on. Like, come on. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. From dead works. From dead works. Come on. And of faith towards God. And yeah, if you still chasing a dog chasing yourself, still going through that sick little uh 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 
sins and different things that you've been dealing with for years and are not growing. And you still got that spiritually immature mindset. Right? So sometimes a lot of Israel come into the world and they never, they never mature spiritually. They're very immature spiritually and they stay immature spiritually. Like, damn, you have not matured. You're still like a damn child, but you know the truth for damn 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, 7 years. But you still a child spiritually. You have not spiritually grown. You have not matured spiritually. Right, like, come on. Of the doctrine of baptism. Of the doctrine of baptism. Good. And of the laying on the hands. Laying on the hands. Good. And the resurrection of the dead. Come on. And of eternal judgment. And eternal judgment. Be. And this we will do if God permit. And these things we're going to do if the Lord permit. So you've been made privy. When you get into this thing and get into the spirit, you have been made privy to some of these things. You've experienced some of these things. You've seen the power that's going to come. Right? Come on. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. It's impossible. It's often it's impossible for those that were enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift. Good. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Good. I have tasted the good word of God. Come on. And the powers of the world to come. Come on. If they shall fall away. You come into this truth and experience all this good stuff. And then to go back in the world. Pause it is there that impossible. Good. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Pause it is damn near impossible. He says impossible. But he's saying like. Because we see cases where people been one by over. But he said it's damn near nearly impossible. For them to be avoided that moment. So that's why a lot of them, they go out in the world and you never see them come back again. Or if they do come back after a while, it takes a lot of time for them to get the world to see them And we patient, we work with our brothers and sisters. They'll be like, yo, man, you know, since, since we're back in the world for like five years, man, she was stripping, she was doing this, and that is what takes some time for them to get the world to So you patient it because you want to accept them back into the fold. The prodigal sons and daughters have come back home. So you want to accept them back into the fold. But Paul said, that's a hard thing, man. That's why a lot of them, they don't know. Oh, you know what I see? I see brothers and sisters go in the world for however long, and they try to come back into the truth, and it don't work. Mm. They, just, they just too worldly. They, it don't work. They still, and they, and they drift back into the world. Or they come into the truth, but they're never really the same. They still got off spirits about them and still, they still say off stuff. They still worldly as hell. So they, they kind of in the truth, but they still got them damn 12 years of when they was in the world on mm. So it, it's kind of like they there, but they not there. Right. All right, come on. See, they crucified to themselves, the son of God afresh. They put Yahweh back up on the cross, crucified the son of the most high afresh. Come on. And put him to an open shame. That's what you do, man. When you come into the truth and then reverse and go back to the world and, and the dog returns to a vomit and go back into the ways of the society, you crucify your house shot fresh and put him to an open shame. Yeah, man. So you know but it but it's gonna happen, you know. Give me uh uh Saint Matthew thirteen and nineteen. Saint Matthew thirteen and nineteen. The scripture says it's gonna happen though. People are gonna come in and they just back in the world, man. One sister, man. Beautiful sister, man. Not, not just, not just a uh, physical, beautiful spirit. Nice sister, man. And the sister, she, she was learning to like this. She was learning out here with us at one time. Then, uh, she went to another camp. She was learning with them. She was actually going to their class to make school. Then something happened or whatever. She didn't like it. Then she went to another camp. And she became part of that camp, that conversation. I won't say the name of it. You know what I'm saying? I used to still see the sister. But it's, uh, I used to see her down here. See her in the city, whatever. Um, uh, dread, uh, dress on, fringes, head covered. Minus apparel, head to toe. Fringes dragging on the sidewalk. Mm. She met her brother. Met a dude. I think the dude was a Christian. She met this dude. Because she wasn't finding no husband in the truth. She met this dude within a year back in the world. Mm. Pants on, cleavage out, going to church, nothing to do with the truth. Anymore. Damn. All because of this man. 
See, that's what you got to be careful. It happens. It happens. Matthew 13, 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 19. Bring it out. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. And now, to me, his sister was around for a while. So she should have known better. But the scriptures do say understandeth it not. You know what I notice a lot about a lot of our people in the Jews, they don't go and listen. They don't go to the scriptures. Mm. It be five, six, seven years. Uh 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 What's that scripture on the Sabbath again, brother? Like, <laughs> I know, you know, like, we get a brain freeze or something sometimes. Your eyes. What's that verse? You know, whatever. But, like, with these people, they literally don't be knowing after seven, eight years. Damn. So, a lot of times, people come into the truth and they don't elevate and understand. They, they lazy with study. They just there. Got a, a whole bunch of precepts written down, but not really studying. You gotta sit down and read the book and study like you do for college, school, anything else. Like you do to become a lawyer, you gotta study to become a replacement in your life. Yep. There's a deal, you gotta study that, put in that work. Like, right, come on. Hey. And understand if it's not, then cometh the wicked one. Then cometh who? Then cometh the wicked one. So you might be, let's say, the sister been in the truth for six years. And repenting and aware of the skirts and fringes and but here come pretty boy Christian. Pretty boy Christian comes along. Oh, he's not in the truth, but he's so handsome. He's a handsome man. He comes to work. Let's say she met him at the job. He comes to work with his suit kind every day. He smells good, but he's not in the truth though, but he's so handsome. And we be talking. I think I like him. I gotta pray to the most high. <laughs> hey, I was shocked to see what's going on with this brother. Next thing you know, sister, I don't know about that girl like that, but you should come and have a Bible study with me one day. Mm-hmm. And the rest is history. You know why? Because it came the wicked. He didn't get from the top. 1319. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, Dad, then come up the wicked. After that six years of being in the truth. Yeah, you got the dress with the fringes dragging on the sidewalk, but you don't you have not applied yourself to the scriptures enough to have a foundation of understanding to be able to cut that Christian and send him on his way. I don't care how, how cute he is. You like brother, I don't even want to deal with you because you're not a man dealing with the scriptures. And if you want to have an unbelieving husband, he at least gotta be pleased as well. You're a full-blown Christian, what happened? You don't have no foundation. You let this man seduce you into the Christian doctrine and you turn to the truth. And you're back in the world and Christianity is going to be the best. Freaking. And captive the weight which was sold in his heart. And then they come the wicked one, Satan used that Christian man to come in and seduce that sister and she goes on back to the church with that man. Like this, what? She heard the word of the kingdom, but understand it or not. Even though it was six years, she didn't apply herself to those scriptures enough to be like, look, you know what? I'm not even going to sit down. You want to study the Bible, go to my elders. Go to my leaders. Go to my Go study with them. No, but you like him, and you're going to go to Bible study with him, and, and next thing you know, you didn't have to listen. Some sisters, some sisters is good with the scriptures too. They can, they can cut some doctors and tell the dude that he can go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If they study and apply themselves. But you go get seduced by that, by that doctor. Now you back to the world, back to the Christian church. No more, no more fringes dragging on the sidewalk. You got on, you got on jeans and the Jesus. Oh, I'm free in Jesus. There you go. All right, come on. This is which received the seed by the wayside. It's always a wicked thing for us not to receive the word. It's very hard. Like you said, the dog be turning to his vomit. How many of you know that was out there smoking weed? Quick, they go to buy weed. Plenty of them did that. Plenty of them. And now it's harder for them to quit smoking weed than it was before. How many of them was out there smoking cigarettes? Quit, and then went back to smoking cigarettes again. Right. Damn, bro. You know, I can't. They just give it. They just leave that alone. 
Don't you know sick of hand smoke pills, nigga? Slack it. <laughs> right. Don't you know that, man? And you still smoking it? Yo, but uh, I was stressed out. What you mean you was stressed out? Ain't that much damn stress in the world for me to go back to smoking a cigarette or smoking a blunt? No, right. the most high God said it's not for us to do that. Right. 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 See that? So, you know, that's a good point the sister brought out, man. They go back to the world. Or sometimes, you know what? The Lord, like I said, the Lord just get rid of people because they're not worthy. It's not even no sex. There's so many in all these sex that's a lot of philosophy. Right. Give me a uh, Revelation 3.15. I've seen people with a, a self. Right. Right. Right, right, right. Well, my mom's right, right, me, right. you don't want to stand in the cold and sell this stuff and right. come here. Right. Or just don't do it, selling at all. Right. But I got to be here. Right. But I trust all I see people donations. Right. They're on this weird stuff and these charms and, and I see people go grabbing for this stuff. You know what I mean? Our people, all kind of different, different beliefs, like, it's, you know, different right. all kinds of doctrines. I mean, they're, they're all over the place and everything. Yeah. Some some brothers and sisters, yeah, they come in and they learn the scriptures, and some of them become pretty sharp. And what happens is now the scriptures is not enough for them anymore. Mm. Now they wanna they wanna get into other. Well, yeah, we the Israelite brother. And I know, man. I, I know them scriptures, Genesis and Revelation, Doc, but. Yes, I acknowledge out here. <laughs> 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 All right, brother. All right, please, please. I got All right, what's going on, brothers? Right? Yeah, man. Read, Kate. Right? Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. A lot of my people are neither cold nor hot. Come on. I would not work cold or hot. You got some brothers and sisters. I've seen this over the years too. It is so annoying as hell. They come around and they complain about everything. Everything is a damn complaint. Why we ain't doing this? Why we don't have that? Why we got the truth? Why we don't own an office building downtown Brooklyn? Why we don't have a car dealership like this? Oh my God! Complain of, don't know one goddamn scripture, but complain about everything. Uh, 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 you know, why we gotta do the new moon like that? Yes, a complainer. Right? And what happens? These these type of people are most of the time, they're the ones not really bringing us to the table. Mm. They're the ones that want to come in and see you have some established already, and then they want to benefit off of it. They're not, well, well, what are you doing? You know, if you want to, uh, 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 okay, you think we should all, we should own the building of our own little office, all right? What have you done? Have you went and checked out the real estate in that city? <laughs> <laughs> have you went and, 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 and hell, I'm going to get my broker's license to help out. You haven't done it. Have you donated $5? It's expensive as hell in most of these cities to buy a building. Have you put either yeah, $5 in the key to try to even try to get towards that? No, you have not. But you complain. So then, because thou art lukewarm, because you are lukewarm, God, and neither cold nor hot, neither cold nor hot, God, I will spill thee out of my mouth. I will what? I will, I will spill, spill thee out, out of my mouth. mouth. Therefore, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because you are lukewarm, you are neither cold nor hot. The Lord said, therefore, I will spill you out of my mouth. So a lot of people, they get, the Lord, they get tossed back into the Lord. Because what? They're not serious. They do know they're not kind of cold. They do have to do the most hard work. A lot of our people, they, they, they come into this thing for prosperity. And there's nothing wrong with prosperity on a certain level. There's, there's nothing wrong. The Israel, you gotta understand what they do with our people. Our people think, you know, well, we gotta have this or have that to show that we're prosperous. Prosperity is on many different levels. Mm. But it's nothing wrong with prosperity. Nothing wrong with material prosperity. Nothing wrong with, of course, uh, spiritual, mental, physical prosperity. All that is good. But it's got to be a balance to it and it's got to be the proper perspective. Right, come on. Because thou sayest, I am rich <laughs> and increased with goods. That's another thing. I am rich and increased with goods. Go ahead. I have need of nothing. I have what? I have need of nothing. I have need of nothing. Come on. And there was not 
that thou art wretched. The Lord said, you are wretched. Mm. Look at Denny, man. Mm -hmm. All these sexual soap pieces coming out of him. Mm -hmm. Multi-millionaire, probably billionaire. I don't know. I don't know how much money he got. Right? But now, hold up. You got a video telling a woman, oh, what you going to say now? The woman is balled up in a tub of moving around like you would beat her ass. Mm. Like, you got all this money and you still got a sexually assault on woman? Because why? You rich and increase the goods and had a need of nothing in this world, but don't know that you're wretched. You're wretched in the spirit. You're wretched when it comes to righteousness and spirituality. Because you don't have a full time, you have a shot of the Right, like, come on. And miserable. And you're miserable. Oh, you're miserable. I got a billion dollars, man. I got damn, uh, uh, probably a hundred Israelite lives. We living in peace. We happy. We keeping the commandments. You know what I'm saying? We, what, what? What am I miserable about? You know what I'm saying? Right, come on. And poor. And poor. You're spiritually poor. Like that saying goes, some, some people are so poor all they have it. Because you got money, but you're poor spiritually. Right, come on. And blind. And what? And blind. And blind. You don't know the truth. You're spiritually blind. Because if, if, if Diddy if Diddy wasn't spiritually blind, he wouldn't be poor. Why right? you got to sexually assault um, a, a, a woman, a young girl? Why well, you gotta go into a sex store and buy butt plugs? Pause, no hope. <laughs> I can't change you. Know, uh, he said he has money, but he's exposed. You know what I'm saying? He's exposed. I mean, come on, man. I, that's a major pause, no hope. Why well, you gotta do that if you, if you, if you was, if you was out, if you was stuck, if you was stuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And naked. And what? And naked. You're spiritually naked. You're not clothed in the and in any case, he's actually naked because he's here. That nigga's well known for running around butt naked. There's many reports of him running up in parties naked, running up in the public naked. Yeah, because he got that homosexual freak spirit. But if you had all this money and you had need of nothing, then why can't that money buy your spirit? Why can't that money, uh, 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 like, uh, what's that? Black Street, Black Street made a song. Buy me love, money can't buy me love. <laughs> no, man, if, if money can't buy you, the, I, I better can't buy you the love of the Most High. Money can't buy you the love of the Most High. Give me uh, Acts 3 and 10. Acts, I believe it's um, Acts chapter 3, verse 10. It can't buy you the love of the Most High. Right? It, it might can buy you fake love in this world. I'm into something like money can't even, you know how many women, man, they get for dudes with money? They had, a, uh, they had a video on Instagram. The, rib, the dude was working on his overtime, breaking his life off, and she was sending 300 a month, or 300 a week to the jail to her ex. So money can't buy you love. Why would, why, I'm giving you my heart, and when I'm going to work this overtime, busting my ass to give you, to have finances better, and you sending my money to the next dude. And I do, when he, if that dude came out of jail, I bet you can smash that one. Because you sending that man $300, I don't know what jail you need to That's a lot of damn promises. Goddamn. That nigga living good up in there. That's 1200 a month. She's sending a dude 300 a month off of her husband's hard working money. I seen it on Instagram. You guys been sending your all kinds of wild stories up there. She's sending a man the next. This dude was her ex. No, he's. He's your ex because he locked up. That dude come out, he smacked him. You know what I'm saying? So she's sending him $300 a week off of her husband's hard-earned money. That's why you damn if you do, damn if you don't. I was up in a, a Harlem one time, 110th Street, and I heard two brothers talk. I wasn't here hustling, but I heard one of the brothers recognized me in my car. He's like, oh, that's the Israelite brother. Why you going to run a piece of heart? Whatever. Him and his man was talking about it. He said, yo, you know what's crazy? He said, you know what's going on around the way right now? He said, all the dudes that's working and got jobs and family and going out there to work for their families, the dudes on the block is smashing their bodies. He said, that's what's going on in the hood right now. All these dudes, he said, that's why. He said some choice things so I can't repeat. Mm -hmm. Women, and you know what I'm saying? Mm. He said, yo, brothers go out here, get married, or get a girl, or you know how 
Everybody, even if the black man, brother, say, even if he don't marry this sister, he'd be like, yo, that's my wife. I've been with her like 10 years, got three children, got that's my wife. You know what I'm saying? So he going out 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning to go to work, working for his family. 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, his woman is getting smashed up in the crib. Mm. By the weed smoking nigga that's on the block. This is why I'm, I'm here hustling. I didn't actually hear this conversation. I hear this conversation, and one of the brothers greeted me. He was like, you know, he was talking some nonsense. He was like, yo, these women are foul, man. He said, these women are foul. So money can't buy you love. Even a even nine to five. Even a nine to five brother is getting played. He's trying to work hard to take care of his family. You know, it's not happening everywhere. You got some women out of love and respect for their husband's work, whatever. But he said, this is the trend in the hood right now. This was about maybe 15 years ago. I was in a 100th century in Harlem. I heard the brothers talk. He said, yo, this was going on in the hood now. It, it's a trend now for niggas to smash dudes, girls while they, while they got work. Wait, read what you got, King. Unbelievable. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 10. And they knew that it was he who sat the bones at the beautiful gate of the temple. Man. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which he had appeared unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, and all the people ran together unto them in a porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Man. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? See that? And so Peter, they had killed. There was a brother that couldn't walk. Right? This brother, he couldn't walk. And he would stand at the temple every day asking for arms. Mm. So, matter of fact, go up a little bit. You start at 10. Go up a little bit and start at Started one time to get the we gotta read the whole thing to get the full understanding. Acts chapter three and verse one. Read oh. that thing. The book of Acts chapter three verse one. And Peter and John went up together in a temple at the hour of prayer, being the night hour. And a certain man, a certain man, laid from his mother's womb. I think uh, the ninth hour would be ten p.m. I'm not mistaken. Read. A certain man laid from his mother's womb was carried, and while they lay daily at the gate of the temple. He said this man was laying from his mother's womb. Mm. He was born not being able to walk. Like, come on. While they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask all of them that entered into the temple. So every day, this brother, when he placed himself at the temple, every day laying there or sitting on the ground or whatever because he couldn't walk, and he would ask for arms in front of the temple. Come on. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for acts and arms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Peter said, I ain't got no money for you. <laughs> he said, Silver and gold have I none. I ain't got no money for you, brother. Good. But such as I have give, I give thee. He said, the, but what I can give you, I'll give you. All right, come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Hamashiach Yahushai. Of Nazareth. Come on. Rise up and walk. He said, listen, I can't give you no money, but guess what? I got the healing power from your power by Shemir Hamashai. I can make you walk again. I can heal your legs and make you walk. Come on. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately... His feet and ankle bones received strength. So now, what you think that man wanted more at that time? To be able to walk or whatever money he could give him? That man said that hell with some money. This man just gave me the ability to walk. Mm. Which, remember, it said he couldn't walk from his birth, from his mother's womb. He was lame. Mm -hmm. He couldn't walk. He said, this man just gave me the power to walk. Mm. He said, listen, man, the hell with some money, man. This mm -hmm. man just gave me the power to walk. Right, come on. And he leaped up, stood. He leaped up, stood, go ahead. And walked. And entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. See that the churches, these churches, they read stories like this. And then you'll see this on their personal dollar, Peter Popoff or 
I've been healed. Hallelujah. And those people be damn actors, man. They had an episode of Good Times like that. When, uh, uh, remember that? When James' friend, he was one of them uh, traveling evangelists, right? And, and, and uh, he had people faking, like getting up out of the wheelchair. And, and he was he was, he was was getting money off of this scam. Mm. But the people wasn't really, and James was like, man, I can't be a part of that, man. You hustling the people. And then Steve Martin had a, a, a movie called Leap of Faith. Where he was faking healing the people, but this was Peter really healing this drug. But they read scriptures, they, these uh, poppy preachers, they read scriptures like this, and they be faking being healed and all that. Like, right, come on. And they knew that it was he was sent from all at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement. See that everybody knew. They was like, yo, this this guy, this guy, he come up since he was born. Yo, this cat is up, walking, and jumping, and leaping out. Like, come on. At that which had happened to him, and as the lame man which was healed, held Peter and John. He said, as the lame man which was healed, held Peter and John. Got it. And all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. They greatly wondered, yo, this dude is walking now. This guy haven't been able to walk since he was born. Peter and John just killed this dude, and for well, the most high healed him through Peter, through Peter mainly, and John. But yo, this dude is walking now. Nobody wants to think about no money then. Hmm. He's like, yo, this guy is walking. Like, right, come on. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own powers or holiness, we have made this man to walk. He said, listen, why y'all amazed at us? The Lord did this, man. In other words, y'all doubting what the Lord can do? The Lord can make a man whole. So Peter said, listen, I don't have no gold and silver, which is money back. He said, I ain't got no money to give you, brother, but guess what? I can call on your power and your own shine and the spirit will make you walk. Mm. But you think you're going to walk for the shine. So sometimes we got to know what's more important. Mm. We got to know what's more important. You know, some of these, uh, that's why some of these, these rich, rich Edomites, man, they be, that's why you got so much human trafficking. They be wanting them body parts to live. They be like, what the hell is it to have all this goddamn money and I can't live? I can't live their choice of money. So that's why the human trafficking be so bad and they be, um, because they be selling the body parts. Because these packages be wanting to live, man. They're like, man, I got all this money, but I'm going to die in, in six weeks. Now nah, you're both going shoot a nigga and give me a man. Mm. Yeah. That's what be going on. Come on. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. The God of our fathers have glorified his son Jesus while he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. See that? He said he, he, uh, he had glorified his son on the Yahweh child. So Peter was going on into glorifying Yahweh child. But the moral of that story in Acts it's Acts of 3, chapter, verses 1 to about 13. The moral of that story is money's not everything. Like Peter said, look, I ain't not going to let you hold, son, but I can, I can let you hold the Holy Spirit. Mm. God ain't got no money for you, but I can oh. heal you, brother. What's more important? Right? Oh. So you got all these riches and money and everything. And I don't get it, man. These dudes, these dudes are bugged out, man. Mm. Why you got to sexually assault a woman? Like I said... You know, you're damn near a billionaire. You can get any woman you want. You can be, listen, a uh, Diddy can go somewhere and literally practice religion illegally. All you gotta do is move to a, a different country where religion is legal, get citizenship there, and a man can have 20 wives. You know, see, you ain't gotta sexually assault some girl named Cassie and But see, that's what, that's what that, uh, but you don't have the spirit of lust and don't want to just better than that. You poor and wretched and miserable and poor. You got all that money. You, you got, if you got all that money and the right spirit, then you know what But you got all that money, you don't have your power and you have your power. Like, give me from Sabbath 11. Sabbath 11 and uh, I believe it's 14. You don't have the most sign in your house, shot. So that's why these guys be miserable, man. I'm like, yo, you find out some of the stuff these rich and famous people be doing. Like, yeah, you know what? All that money don't mean nothing. See, the poor are looking like, damn, I want to get up there with them. Mm. They ain't got to worry about bills. They ain't got to worry about this and that. Mm -hmm. Where's their spirit? Where's their 
Was the Solomon chapter 11, verse 14? Bring it up. Prosperity and efforts. So, 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 back, so, back 11, 14. But you couldn't use that with the Messiah, but it's not. It's all good. Cut. Prosperity and adversity. That prosperity and adversity. Good. Life and death. Life and death. Come on. Poverty and riches. Poverty and riches. Come on. Come of the Lord. They all come of the Lord. Mm. But if you rich and then you don't return the favor to the Lord, first of all, by giving back. You know, you can't give back to the most high, but you give back to the work and the less fortunate of your nation, of your nation. Now, you don't be like Jay-Z and give uh, 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 $2 million for fresh water in Africa. Mm. Which a lot of times, that'd be a tax write-off, and that'd be all. Uh, they do that, their publicists will tell them to do that to look good to the public. Right, they're, that's a, a, a public thing, and they get the damn thing. A lot of times they can write that stuff off. But, give it, give it to Israel. We need it. Mm -hmm. Oprah, Oprah building schools in South Africa. Yo, we need some schools in the south side of Chicago where you from. Mm. Build some stuff there. You know? But a lot of times they do that for the tax right off. But do it for your own people, damn it. Yeah, I'm going to do it for the publicity, but it's going to be for this. One. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times they have the money, but they don't have the spirit of your house. You got to have both. Many, many, many of the scriptures are rich here. Right, the most high, most high, make nobody, you know, men, men of the Lord. Just to be a man of the Lord don't mean you got to be poor. Look at Solomon. But you got to do it in the right spirit. These people get money and they bump the hell out of them. They, they be all over the damn place, man. They be bumped out. So any more questions or comments, we're going to get a few more and start writing it down. Right, come. Right, any more questions or comments? All right, it's cold, but the word of the Lord is keeping us warm. Mm. By a shimmer, my shimmer, my shimmer. By a shimmer, my shimmer. Every winter, we gotta get the you gotta get the content. Give me jail by five point two. Right, we gotta get the content. Not Amalek out here all night. Right, Amalek out here all night. Jewish people, right? Jewish people. Did y'all get the hostages from Hamas? <laughs> <laughs> she threw her hands up when you say Jewish. <laughs> Right, are y'all getting ready for Hanukkah, Kanuka? <laughs> y'all getting ready for Kanuka? <laughs> the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 14. Bring it out. Before the say the Lord, God of hosts, because he speaks this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire and the people wood. See that the Lord's word is like fire and the people are wood. Right? Meaning what? It, it burns them up. You know what I'm saying? The Lord. The Lord's word, like if that two-edged sword and cut, it also burns them up. It's fire. Good. And it shall devour them. It shall what? It, it shall, shall devour, devour them. them. That's why a lot of times the people be mad, man. Because the word be devouring them. The word be cutting them. We ain't gotta hit, we ain't gotta cut them with a knife. We ain't gotta burn them with actual fire. The Lord gonna do that in the nuclear destruction. But his word be but devouring them, man. He's telling them up. Right, because they spirit get convicted. Your spirit get convicted because you know nine times it'll take you doing something off. So your spirit get convicted. And then you want to get mad at us. Oh, you God too faith. And this dude is what like, we got to know. The word cut your ass and you're mad. Yeah, but that's what it is, man. Right, and then brothers, you know, brothers bring it out with power and force and, you know, like with the spirit and, 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 and the uh, swag that, that J, you know, brothers have. So we cut into people's spirit. That's what we do. We got a job to do. You know, we want to get the hell out of here. We want to teach this gospel, seal it, and let it get the hell out of here. Everything else is just extra. Everything else, man. We're not out here for our own bragging rights. We're not out here for its own. We're not out here to impress nobody. We're not out here because we got the flyest garment or the flyest headband on. I got the big all bands with the that's all it's all flavor for this act we out here to get the people back to the house man. Uh. I'm not out here cutting this big banana yeah but I like it but <laughs> I'm not out here because of this man don't get simple right right you don't get simple man oh you gotta think you the man you gotta get banana on <laughs> stupid like that man. come on man it's just Say something so stupid out of your damn mouth, man. Trying to, you know, a lot of Israel want to condemn you so bad, they just say any stupid damn thing out of their mouth. 
Lord. They think they all laughing because they got big the door open. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, it's what I say. It's just shine, man. I no more, no less. Right? We out here, man, so but we hoping the electric is sealed and this society can be destroyed. We can get the hell out of here, man. Bring them chariots on us. You know, we want salvation. So we endure the elements. We endure what it may be, you know. I just came from traveling the whole month of November. Mm. Tired as hell. I said, look, I'm in New York for a couple of days. I'm going to go out there and put it over my brother. You know what I'm saying? The, I, I ain't no greater, man. I'm the elder or whatever, but I ain't no greater than to get out there and run with my brother. Yeah, always out there. So I'm in New York for four days, damn it. One of them days is camp. Mm. I'm going to take my ass to camp. And I had to squeeze it in, but damn it, I made it. But I shimmed my shit, I got it. But I shimmed my shit, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, man, I want this crowd, man. I want to get out of here. The more work we put in, the more we get closer to the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we got a... Uh, in the midst of confusion and madness and the world, prophecy, personal issues, issues in the nation, issues with brothers, issues with sisters, issues with every goddamn thing, issues with each of kingdom, they still got to pull through and serve your humble life and bless your God. And if we can seal one soul, we've done our job. But I all praise to your humble body. Okay? Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, as we go to it, we, uh, we pray that the house shall be the up and that we will draw all in Alright? Uh, uh, and death to America, death to Babylon, nuclear fire, brimstone, destruction. We want to continue to prophesy on your ass, the downfall of your kingdom. You know, we went into some different dynamics with the nation tonight. But you saw the other nations, we on your neck, boy. We are on your goddamn neck. Kingdom will fall. Give me the report to the top. Right, Kwame Asha. Kwame on your neck, boy. We about to, we about to celebrate Maccabees a week from tonight. Most I will. We gonna celebrate when, when, when uh, the Levites whip the hell out of the Greeks, man. Mm. Good, good Maccabee and good, good, nice, robust, rich Maccabee <laughs> history, man. Get into that rich history, man. Mm. So much you can learn from reading about the stories, man. The Apocrypha and the Maccabees stories and the history with it. Good, good, rich history, man. Of us whooping the hell out of the Greeks and chasing them out of the temple and rededicating our temple back to the Most High. Mm. Hence the word Hanukkah, which means dedication. So we're in that season, man. I love this season, man. Whoop the hell out of the Greeks and took our temple back and we celebrated for eight days. By Shiva Mashiach. By Shiva Mashiach. Bring it out. My truth. Suffer patiently, suffer patiently, come on. The wrath that is to come upon you from God. God. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction. Shortly you're going to see your enemy's destruction. Come on. And shall turn upon his neck. And shall what? And shall turn upon his neck. Tread upon his neck. We're shortly going to see our enemy's destruction and tread upon his neck. By Shimon. Uh, uh, you went into some things concerning the nation and riches and repenting or whatever. But we on we on you Jesus next, man. Right, your 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 damn kingdom. We still gonna prophesy against you and your kingdom gonna fall. Gonna start bringing destruction all over the land. This holiday season gonna get jacked up. We gotta pay attention to the news. Most gonna bring some judgment for the end of this year. We gonna we gonna end, we gonna end this year with a bang. Mm. Right, most I'm gonna take this year out with a bang. Just, just sit and watch. Most I'm gonna bring some judgment and prophecy, and if it be His will, we're gonna be right there bringing it out. Ah. Right, because that's that's a uh, 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 that's the job of the people of the Lord. All right, give me Amos three and six. We'll close out with that. Amos chapter three verse six. Okay, come. Amos three and six. Mm -hmm. That king. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 6. Bring it out. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? The trumpet be blown in the city, guys. And the people not be afraid? Come on. Shall there be evil in a city? Shall there be evil in the city, guys? And the Lord have not done it? And the Lord have not done that evil? You look all, you look on the news all around the world where judgment and prophecy happen. I think uh, something happened in India. Uh, 39 people got destroyed. 
Right? That's the most high. Mm. All right, so there'll be evil in the city. Go ahead. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Oh, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Right? Yes. Do you see judgment no matter what small or major city in the world the Lord have done it? Right? Come on. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Go ahead. But he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The Lord said he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. By Shema Shakyosha. Did the evil in the city of the Lord have not done it? What was that last month? Um, there was four L.A. deputy sheriffs that committed suicide within 24 hours. And they did a documentary for the L.A. deputy sheriffs. The LA sheriffs um, uh, uh, I was real, it was a real stressful job. And uh, like four of the deputies killed themselves with the two uh, All committed suicide. Yeah, that's the most high, man. Because the LA fair sheriff, they racist as hell anyway. You know, you know the, the gang bangers are out there killing each other, but them damn, them, them sheriffs are racist as hell. They got, this, they got big movies about the LA sheriff being racist as hell. So now the most high put the spirit on them and kill them. Right, so there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it, along with all the other judgments that will continue to get into. Alright, so you know, tonight we just got into some dynamics of power and going back in the world and, and, and you know, people that are being in this truth and then running back out here to another man and saying, Hey, you know, I'm gonna come back out here and then running back out here to another man and then thinking you're gonna come back in this truth and that's a hard thing for us. Right, so you know, you know, good point you brought up, since a lot of our people just go back to the world. Right, and we just had that this year. You had a group of Israelites celebrating Thanksgiving. Mm. Eating damn pork. What the hell is going on? Now this thing is serious, man. That's going way back to the world. I don't give a damn if your fringes are down to the, it's from my damn oak down to the ground. You got the longest fringes in the, your border of blue is damn this wide. You mm. know what I'm saying? Damn. What? Signs of the time. Definitely signs. So with that definite structure to Esau and the nation, power, peace, safety, and the kingdom of heaven to the world, to the people of heaven of our blood. From your shadow, we still got next. I'm Lord Young. Bring it out. H O I T chariot fly. All brings to your Howard Yahweh shot forever of our blood. H O I pull up boys. All the camps in your Howard Yahweh shot forever of our blood. Come your shadow. Come your shadow. Shalom. Downtown Brooklyn, you got that work. H-O-I, right. the Chariot Fly. Downtown Brooklyn, you got that work. It's always good to come home. They look like bringing it out of New York City. Headquarters. Right. So you got that work. Short trip here. Short trip here. And so we return to Burn. Jeremiah 514. With the word of the Lord. Right? So we'll be back, Brooklyn. Most I will. Come here, child. Come here, child. Come here, Plastic surgery. That's man ridiculous. Goes the I know. Ridiculous, man. How yeah. big can a man understand his own way? We right. out here teaching the Bible. We got those books. We teaching the Bible. Oh, that book? yeah. That's good. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up, Charlie. Yeah. We come out here every I'll be, Wednesday. I'll be back in three weeks. I'm going to West Coast. Are you not going to be there Friday? No, I'm going, I'm going West Coast. But I'll be back in like three weeks. Hey. Most of what I'll be here at the end of like the end of the I support, I support, bro. I support. Yeah. I just finished working right now. I'm at home, but I support you, man. What we need is knowledge. Yeah. It's knowledge. Biblical knowledge. What's up, bro? Have a great night, guys. All right, have a great night, brother. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. Hope y'all got edified. If y'all learned one thing tonight, we've done our job. I just dipped back home into the city, New York. For a couple of days, had to handle some business here and uh, get my jibbers fixed. <laughs> nah, no folly. But I uh, had to dip out to Brooklyn with my brothers and get the word out. All praise to you. How about you, my shock? I was shy. Once again, if you learn one thing tonight, we've done our job. Love you, Israel, forever and ever. Month. New York, most I will. I'll be back in about three weeks if the most I say the same. And we'll continue to get this work. Kwame Shalom. Shalom. Oh, by the way, happy Hanukkah, everybody.
Happy pre-Hanukkah. Hanukkah starts next Wednesday, sundown, December 6th. Kwam Yashala. Shalom. Shalom. Hold on.